Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is our call to worship. To our Pastor Bishop Littman, to Lady Littman, to the New Mountain Top family, and all who have joined us on this blessed Sunday morning. Let us quickly go to a familiar passage of scripture found in the gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter, and I will begin reading at verse number 13. And it reads, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom do ye say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In this passage, Jesus was questioning his disciples as to whom do men say that I am. They answered him and said, Some say you are John the Baptist, Elias, Jeremiah. He asked them, Whom do do ye say that I am? Simon Peter became the spokesperson of the group and I can imagine he stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Can you stand like Simon Peter as a relevant witness as to whom Jesus is today? Who is he and what is he to you? He is our master, our savior, our soon coming king. He's our bridge over troubled water, our battle acts in a time of battle. He is the center of our joy. He is the lifter up of our head. He is everything to us. Who is he and what is he to you? Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, a shelter from the stormy blast, an hour eternal home. Gracious God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, God, it is again that we come to give you the praise. We've come to give you the honor. Father, we've come to bless your name today. We will bless it at all times, and your praise shall continually be in our mouths. God, we thank you because you are amazing. Father, you're awesome and you are almighty, just God all by yourself. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough for all of your blessings, for all of your goodness. Now, God, in this world we live, we have ups and downs and heartaches and bereavement and pain. We are living in perilous times, times that we have so many problems to which we have no solutions and dilemmas to which we have no answers. But your word lets us know that we can approach the throne of grace, hallelujah, glory to God, and find help in our time of need. This is a needed time. Lord, teach us to be humble, that our healing shall be manifested. God, we invite you into every song, every scripture, every prayer today. Rise up in your manservant as never before that he may deliver a rhema word to us on this day. Grant us these thy blessings, Lord, and we will always be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and glory shall be thine forevermore. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And thank God.
hard Trying to live a clean life in a cold world oh, Well, no one really understands my pain And what I go through So this is what I had to tell God I said, Lord, I I really want to talk to somebody that ever needed the Lord to fall. Lord, oh, oh, hey, yeah. Somebody ever too, God, I need you to walk with me right now, Jesus. Lord, this teacher's journey, Jesus. I need you. I need you right now, sing it now. Tell God something like this as well, I said. Mm, Lord, I need to hear a word from you. Oh, yes. Trouble be weighing me down. Because I don't know what to do. But see, God, when I read it, your word, it told me something like this. It says, Yo, hey, tell me to look towards. And I know, I know where my help is coming from. I need somebody to open up their mouth and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, say, I need you. I need you. Listen, I'm really talking to somebody that's been through the storm and the rain, but you had to call on God. Anybody ever told God, you said, Lord. To walk with me, Jesus. To set free the day, Jesus. Right, right Listen, I have to tell God something like this. Listen. I need you. I need you right now. Mm -hmm. I need you. I need you right now. If you really need God, I need you to open up your mouth and tell him, said I need you. I need you. Said I need you. I need you right now. Just like the woman with the issue of blood that was sick for a very long time. She said, I can just touch the hymn. Oh, right only if I can just touch the hymn of his garment. I know I'll be made whole. I need you right Listen, now. and what about the man with leprosy? Hey, hey, boo, 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 boo. He said, Master, if you could just heal you me, right if you just heal now. me, I know oh, 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 oh. I need everything will be all right. I need you right and that's the mighty testimony today you've been going through. He hey. said, God, I need you to do it for me. God, I need you to hold my hand. I God, I need you to do it. Whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it. I need you. Don't do it without me, Jesus. I need you right now. So many things going on in this world, and we need. I need you. We need you, yeah. I need Brought me in a cradle of love. Listen, I 
been coming to church for a while now. Amidst the busyness of work and life, he wants to grow closer to the Lord, but he feels like something's missing. He reads his Bible, well, sometimes. He's attending a home group and even listening to podcasts of old sermons. But try as he might, he just feels like something's missing. Then Bob heard a teaching on giving financially. He felt a little convicted, knowing that he and his family were not regularly tithing 10%. But he wondered, does God really command me to give the first 10% to the church? Does the church really even need the money? Oh, what's in it for me? Why should I give? Bob decided to dig a little deeper and look into it for himself. So he opened his Bible and really didn't know where to look. So he Googled Bible passages about money. He was very surprised to find a large number of verses about tithing and not just in the Old Testament. Jesus himself taught about tithing to the local church. Now Bob was really feeling convicted. He was beginning to see why the tithe was so important. It wasn't about the church needing money or trying to scam him in some way. It was a question of the heart. Bob repented of his disobedience and he started to return the first 10% of his income to God. He was pleasantly surprised to see breakthroughs in many areas of his life. His relationship with his children, his marriage, and even his finances began to improve. Bob thought back to one of the verses that he'd read about the time. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out my blessing upon you. Say, say. 
someone, if you could open up your mouth and tell them, say, I come with my hands lifted to thee, Jesus. I, I come with everything that I have in me. Well, grace and peace to you, family. What a great joy it is to share the word of the Lord with you yet again. Our God is so awesome, isn't he? He is just wonderful and he is worthy to be praised. I trust that you are enjoying our virtual broadcast each and every week. We endeavor to make it better and better. And literally, I spend days working on editing and putting it all together and making sure the transitions are smooth and making sure the volume is okay for all the different pieces and literally it takes all week long to put our broadcast together and i'm doing that from the house at the moment um but i'm thankful for your viewing our broadcast thank you for commenting thank you for sharing and it's my great joy to continue to serve you as your pastor and i'm so proud of you as a church as a body so thankful for our music ministry for their spirit of excellence and always providing for us uh, even in times past just excellence in music ministry well god bless all of you our ministers our deacons uh, my beautiful wife to all of you we love you so much we're praying for you continually and uh, today i want to share a word with you from the book of proverbs chapter number 30. i want to go before the lord right now in prayer Father, thank you for yet another opportunity to share your word, to communicate your gospel, to be able to be a blessing unto your beautiful people. Thank you for the privilege and for the very, very presence of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. Bless us now as we proceed to attempt to minister your word unto your people. And for whatever you do, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Proverbs chapter number 30 and verse number 24 through verse number 28 from the New International Version of the Bible. Again, Proverbs 30 verse number 24 through verse number 28. And there you will find these words. Four things on earth are small yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crags. Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, Yet it is found in king's palaces. I want to use this unusual passage of scripture and speak to you in this message from this simple subject. Use what you've got. Use what you've got. I'd like for you to post that on your social media. Hashtag use what you've got. And let others know the word that you heard from your pastor on this weekend. Again, use what you've got. I love the Proverbs because the Proverbs are literally words to live by. In fact, when you look at the etymology in the Latin, the prefix pro, P-R-O, literally means to come before or to precede. Of course, the Suffix verbs literally means verbiage, which is another term for words or phrases or thoughts. So when you look at the word proverbs, it literally means words, phrases, or thoughts that come before you in your life. In other words, it's words of wisdom that was written from a king addressed to his son. He does not specify which of his sons to whom he was referring. 
which gives us the freedom to accept the sonship adoption of God as our father. Meaning this, that the Proverbs is pretty much the only book in the Bible that can literally be applied every verse to your life. I mean, literally be applied to your life because it is basic generic wisdom that will lead you to a place of tremendous and immense prosperity. So when we look at Proverbs chapter number 30, verse 24 through 28, we find that the writer here gives us four principles that he extracts from the life and the livelihood of four creatures. These four crawling creatures are not animals of majestic prowess. He's not talking about the great white shark, neither the whale. He's not talking about the beautiful bald eagle. Neither is he talking about the giraffe with its enormous neck and height. But four little creatures, critters, if you will, from which we can extract some powerful lessons to apply to our own lives. And in this season that we're living in right now, many of us have had to learn new skills and we've had to learn to adapt because the virus has kept those with wisdom who are smart quarantined and shut in. And so we're not able to get around the way we used to right now, or at least we should not be. And I want to admonish you, please wear a mask and please exercise wisdom in going out of your home to do things. And so for many of us, we've had to learn how to either go without or how to do it ourselves. And that's why this message is important. Use what you've got. God has given each one of us unique skills, opportunities, and knowledge, but he expects us to use what we've got to grow and to learn and to develop and to evolve into the great people that we are destined to be. When we look at these four animals, we don't see the most privileged of animals. We don't see the most proud or prowess of animals, but we see these four little creatures that use the skills that God has put in them to not only survive, but thrive. So I want to talk to you today about using what you've got. Let's look at the first one. And the first point I want to lift up this morning is that you have to recognize the power of your own strengths. Recognize the power of your own strengths. When you look at verse number 25, you discover that the writer here talks about the ant. And let's look again at what he says. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Now, the ant, ladies and gentlemen, has the strength to resist immediate pleasures. Ooh, don't miss that. This is good, y'all. The ant teaches us something very powerful. And that is that the ant has the strength to literally move something that is bigger than itself. And here's what the ant teaches us about why you got to use what you got is that you're stronger than you think you are. I dare you to just type that in right now or look at somebody in your house and tell them you're stronger than you think you are. Just like the ant has the inborn innate ability to move something more than three times its size, God has given you more strength than you think. And you've got to use what you've got and recognize the power of your own strength. The ant has the strength to resist immediate pleasure. That's what this verse teaches us is that the ant works all summer storing up resources while everything else is out playing on the beach. The ant is working, building up resources for the off season. And, and here's some powerful stuff, y'all, we can learn and extract from this ant. That even in this season, while folks are violating protocol and 
violating warnings and going to the beach without a mask. Store up now. Save up now for winter. That means saving money. That means putting funds to the side. It means not spending unnecessarily because you have to understand that you've got to recognize the power of your own strength. If you do what others want, you can have what others don't. And so when we learn the economic power that we have as a people, that when you spend, you are literally giving your life and livelihood to people who are living off of your labor. The ant understands that if I work hard now, I can play hard later. And you want to be in a position financially and economically like the ant that while others are spending out, you are building up and you are saving up and you are building a reservoir of resources so that when the winter comes, you won't have to borrow from anyone, but you have more than enough to take care of your own family. I want to lift up two of these in this message and then I'll finish it up on another Sunday. You have within you the power to resist the need to spend unnecessarily. And you have to take control of your life and take control of your resources and control of your finances so that you can own instead of just renting. And you can own without being owned. But not only does the ant have the power to resist immediate gratification, the ant also has the strength to attack without being detected. Ooh, that's good, y'all. The ant has the power to attack without being detected. You know, if you've ever stepped in an ant bed, you don't know you stepped in it right away. You know when the ant starts biting. And watch this now, because God has given you the power to attack the work of the enemy without even being detected. You have the power of prayer on your side. You have the power to call on God. You have the power to resist the attacks of the enemy and cause the enemy to flee from you. But you've got to use the power of your own strength. Not only does that ant teach us that we need to be in control of ourselves, of our spending, of our emotions, of our actions, of our attitude, but we also need to be under the control of the Holy Spirit so that we're able to attack every work of Satan, every work of the enemy, every attack that is laced in racism bigotry and hatred without even being detected. You see, there's power in your words. There was power in your spiritual awareness. And like the ant, you don't know the half of the power God has given unto you. But like the ant, you've got to learn that I have the authority and the, the power to take control of my emotions, of my spending, of every area of my life. And if I allow the Holy Spirit, he'll take control over my spiritual life. Number yes. two, race to the only place of safety. Race to the only place of safety. Now, verse 26 talks about an animal that we're not familiar with in Western culture. It talks about an animal called a hyrax. The hyrax is about the size of a rabbit, similar to a groundhog in its nature. It is virtually a defenseless animal. It has no real resources for which to fight opposing animals or predators away. 
it is often chased by foxes and by bobcats. They love to chase and kill hyraxes. And so what the hyrax does is that since it has no defense mechanism to fight off the bobcats and to fight off the foxes, the hyrax makes its home in the mountain, in the high place. Crags are small openings or holes in the mountains that lead to an underground tunnel. The hyrax understands that even though I have no way of defending myself, I know how to hide myself in a place of safety where my enemy cannot attack me. Come here, lean in, let me preach to you just a minute. What God wants you to understand about using what you got is that even when the bobcats and foxes of life are all around you, when you feel surrounded by your enemy, when you feel anxious or depressed, you got to use what you got. And that means that when you feel like life is cramping in on you, crowding in on you, you got to run to the only place of safety. And aren't there times that we feel sort of like the high rocks, defenseless on our own, without hope, uncertain about the future, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing what political pundits are going to say or do next. And we can feel so defenseless sometimes, but I'm here to tell you, you got to use what you got. For God has not left us without defense to fight off the predators and the evil of this world. But what he has done for us, if we'll use what we have, is he's provided us space in him. That is a hole in the rock that we can run into and discover the underground tunnel of prayer, of mercy, of grace. And the enemy cannot come in after us. Because we are hidden in the presence of the rock himself. And I want to tell you, you've got to use what you've got. You've got to understand that 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But if we'll resist him, James says, he will flee from us. God has not left us without a proper safe defense for life. I've come to tell you, if you know God, you better pray. If you're born again, you better call on Jesus. You've got to use what you've got in order to survive the bobcats and the foxes of this world. And thank God he's given us a thing called a relationship, power, prayer, eternal life that we can survive and be able to run away from every onslaught of the enemy. I love that old hymn that says, I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Run into the rock this week. Run away from the predators, the noise of this world, and hear God clearly. Like the hyrax, hide in God. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. I want to pray with you today that whether you're facing the challenge of the ant, you're carrying a load that is bigger than you are, whether you're trying to find uh, peace and, and, and restitution from the chasing of life and the, the, the struggles of life, I want you to know you can run into the God that we serve. You can hide in him and he'll give you rest. If you're not saved, if you've never accepted the Lord as your Savior, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you died for me. Your blood on Calvary sets me free. I give you my heart. Make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, friend. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the body of Christ. Send me an email right now. Let me know. Go to our church website. Let us know. I prayed that prayer. I believe Jesus came into my heart. Well, God bless you, my friend. In the challenges that will face you this week, I want you to remember part one of our sermon. 
about using what you got. Remember the ant is able to carry a load bigger than itself. You are too. Remember the ant is able to resist immediate satisfaction and gratification because it's storing up for later. You can do that too. Remember that the ant trust in God to take him through the next season. You must do that too. Remember the hyrax chased by predators but knows where to hide in the cleft of a rock. You can do that too. I'm praying for you. I love you. God bless you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift up his face upon you. The Lord grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.